there. Thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard. But no poster to show you today, but wow, what an early seminal historic concert ticket to show you. This is no less than the very first known Bob Dylan concert ticket that actually has his name on the ticket, as opposed to just being an early folk festival or something that we know he played at. And it makes sense because this was his first New York concert, well documented, November 4th, 1961, at Carnegie Chapter Hall. Now, most Dylan collectors know about this event from the four-page program or pamphlet that's in circulation. Here's the four-page program I'm referring to, and I'll get to more details about this in just a minute. But this is the much rarer admission ticket, and what's really fun about it for collectors is that rather than being a tear in half, right, and give one half back to the patron, this looks like pretty much a turn over the whole ticket as you went into the building. So, you know, the downside is there's no ticket stubs out there um, for fans to collect, collectors to collect, you could say, but the ones that are around are complete and whole tickets, which are even more fun, so that's really a nice upside. As you can see on there, from the top, it says the Folklore Center presents, in a nice script to offset it, Bob Dylan, Saturday, November 4th, 1961, 8.30 p.m. Carnegie Chapter Hall, 154 West 57th Street, New York, New York. And then the lower left-hand corner, it does say $2, including tax. And in the lower right-hand area, it gives the ticket number, which in this case is 197. And by the way, the hall only held 200 people, so this thing was really dealt off the bottom of the deck. Now remember, this was not Bob playing Carnegie Hall yet, by any stretch. This was him playing Carnegie Chapter Hall, which was just a small annex to the much more famous auditorium. So here's a nice old picture of Carnegie Hall in Midtown Manhattan. And on the fifth floor there, off to the left, in that red circle, was a little room called Carnegie Chapter Hall. That's right. How small was the place, the room? Well, let's take a look at this picture of the interior. Wow, check that out, huh? Boy, how intimate. That's really something. That's amazing to see that picture. Now, as you can see, the dance floor, I guess you'd call it, in front of the stage has no chairs, but I'm sure for acoustic concerts, they would move all the chairs in to be right in front of the performer. By the way, I'd like to thank PopSpotsNYC.com for these images, which were really helpful. So, the show was produced by Izzy Young of the Folklore Center, and Izzy reports only 53 tickets were sold out of the 200 seats. But he sure tried to sell them. Got to give him credit for that. He sold them, of course, at his Folklore Center down in Greenwich Village, and even took out advertisements, for example, in the Village Voice of New York just a couple of days before the event. And here's a reproduction of that very ad dated November 2nd in the Village Voice two days before. Kind of wondering if maybe Izzy undersold Bob a little bit or didn't use all his guns. I mean, Bob had signed to Columbia Records by now, you know, weeks earlier, so shouldn't this ad say, you know, new Columbia Records recording artist or something, a major feather in Bob's cap? In fact, at this very time overseas in England, the Beatles had just done a few recordings with Tony Sheridan, and yet all of their posters and ads were saying Polydor recording artists, you know, so if you've got it, you're supposed to flaunt it, but I guess Izzy or Bob or somebody just felt, go with just the straight facts, and so that's what's on here. So what did the super young Dylan sing at this early concert? Well, there's just a partial tape of the show that exists, so we know seven songs that he did, and I guess nobody took notes on the rest of the songs that he did. But of the seven we know, there's no originals in there. It's just too early for Bob. So he did seven covers, you know, blues and folk standards and lead belly, stuff like that. And three of them, by the way, he would end up recording for his first album, Bob Dylan, on Columbia Records, which he actually recorded later this very month. It's also kind of funny, of the, of the seven-song tape that exists, Dylan does an old, you know, standard called 1913 Massacre, and boy, the melody is exactly, note for note, what Bob used for his song to Woody on his first album. <laughs> so that's a pretty funny tip there in a giveaway. 
Now Bob, by all accounts, was nervous. Well, no surprise there, of course, but he was fairly modest and self-effacing. So that's nice to hear, and I think I've actually drummed up a photo taken of Bob on stage on this very night. Sure, here's a picture most Bobophiles have seen, and to the best of my knowledge and research, this was actually taken on November 4th of 61 at Carnegie Chapter Hall. And there he is, holding the guitar up, you know, looking like he's having fun, and uh, complete with his corduroy cap on his head. So, we don't know what Izzy Young did with all these tickets, both used and unused, which of course are the same. Um, but we sure know what he did with that four-page program. He overprinted them in the first place and then kept them all. He had printed so many of these originally that he actually sold them at his folklore center in Greenwich Village for years. And especially after Bob became famous, people were interested, even though I think he was getting only a buck or two each in the 60s for these. I was lucky enough to hang with Izzy for a week once at his folklore center when it was in Stockholm, Sweden, and he assured me that he never reprinted these. They're all original strikings before the show, so that's important to collectors, so that's really good to know. So you've got this four-page pamphlet. You can see the size there. It's very fun and cool and certainly very seminal in Bob's career. In fact, Izzy interviewed Bob extensively and prints it, you know, inside the, the middle of the program. And Dylan really perpetuates a lot of the early myths and yarns that he was spinning, such as having been raised in Gallup, New Mexico, for heaven's sake. And at one point, Dylan even claims that he was already, at this point, writing songs for country rockabilly star Carl Perkins? Really, Bob? Okay, whatever you say, but I don't think so. 20-year-old Bob Dylan. Wow, less than a year after he landed on New York soil in his first New York concert. What a great ticket and program to have. Wow. Thanks a lot for dropping by today. Have a good day, and we'll see you again for something soon. Bye-bye.